Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to continue on with our front end library projects and build a JavaScript calculator. And we want to build a JavaScript calculator that is functionally similar to this code pen right here, where we can add up numbers and multiply them and divide them. And it like shows up with like what we did and the actual answer, and then we can clear it and then do another test nine divided by seven is 1.2857. So this is kind of what we're going to be building today. And it's going to look very similar as well, except use a lot less lines of code than what they used. So to get started with this, make sure we have Visual Studio code downloaded and ready to go. And then make sure that we are in a folder called JavaScript calculator or whatever kind of folder you want to use for this project. And then we can start making our files. We're also going to be using React to make this. And I think that's the only like add on we're going to use is react and Babel, but Babel is basically react. So let's start off by making our index.html file and do exclamation point enter, get our boilerplate set up, and then we'll call it our JavaScript calculator or JS calculator. Now we want to be able to use react with this. So we have to go get those CDN tags. So I'll just look up react CDN links. First one that pops up, and grab the first two, copy those over, paste them in, save it. And then now we need Babel as well. So we'll look up Babel CDN, do the setup Babel, and then in the browser, and then it will be this script tag right here that we need. Paste that in, and then in our body, we'll have a script tag. The type will be text of Babel, text slash Babel. Otherwise it won't work. And then we'll link to a separate file for our JavaScript. So we'll go dot slash index.js. And this dot slash means our current folder. So we'll make our index.js file inside this folder. And now we should be linked up to that with this. Next thing we want to do is we want to have a div with an ID of root inside of our body so that we can link to that in our JavaScript file. So we'll go in our JavaScript file and we'll make a functional component called app. And for now, we'll just return a div of hello world because I want to just see if it's working right now. And then we'll do react dom.render and then we'll render our app and we'll render it onto our document.get element by ID. And it's going to be our root that we defined in our HTML. Save that and then to see if it's working, we have to open it up with live server. If you don't have live server, make sure to get it. It's just a, a VS Code extension. It's this one by Ritwick Day. Make sure you download it or install it. And then you'll be able to right click and open with live server. And there's our hello world, it shows up. That's fantastic. Now let's get started making this calculator. So obviously we don't want to return hello world. Instead, we're gonna start with two divs. The first div is going to be a class name of container. And then the second div is going to have a class name of grid. So if you just do dot grid, it'll assume that you're doing a div and just make a div for you. And I think what I wanna do first is actually make the buttons. So if I save that, hello world will go away because there's nothing in here. And also we're gonna be using our own CSS. So to do that, we'll have a separate file called style.css and we have to link to it in our HTML. So inside of our HTML, we'll do a link tag that will link to our dot slash style that CSS. So there we go, now we can style it with our CSS. But right now I just want to stay in our JavaScript file and start making our buttons. Our buttons are actually gonna be called, they're gonna be divs with an on click handler. And we need, I'm gonna make it look a lot like this. So we need like, we need like 20 buttons. So I'll do div, dot pad button and we need like 20 of these so i'll just do times 20 to make 20 of them and they all have class of pad button the first one here we'll look at this for now first one is going to say ac the second one is going to say c because i'm going to do like a all clear and a like back one clear and then this one will be a division and then times so an x and then seven eight nine minus and then four five six plus and then one two three equals and then zero and dot and then we can get rid of these last two so that should handle all the buttons that we need now we're going to add some separate class names onto these so that we can different differentiate them so this one is going to be ac this one's going to be c this one's going to have a div standing for division this one will be times standing for multiplication this one will have seven and so on eight so there we go we have our four five six plus one two three equals zero and dot 
classes on them. So let's save that and see what it looks like. We just have a bunch of divs. <laughs> Not very cool right now, but we are going to fix that with our styling. So now we want to go into our style.css and we'll for first grab our container with dot container and we'll give it a padding top of 100 pixels, give it a display of flex, a justify content of center and an align items of center just so that it's centered on this page. So there it's centered. Now we want to grab our grid and we'll do a display of grid. So we'll use CSS grid for this. We'll have grid template columns. We'll have four of these, all 1FR. So 1FR four times. And then we'll do grid template rows and we'll have six rows. So 1FR six times. We'll define our areas with grid template areas. And these areas are going to be defined like so. The stuff on top is going to be our display that we haven't made yet. And then we're gonna have our AC, our C, our division, our times button on our second row. And then on our third row, we're gonna have seven, eight, nine, and minus. And then on our fourth row, we'll do four, five, six, and plus. Fifth row will have one, two, three, and equal. And finally, our sixth row will do zero twice and dot and equal. We can save that. And there we go. Now we just have to add padding and um, some other stuff to make it format correctly. And to do that, we'll grab our pad button. So dot pad button. And this will have a display of flex and we want to center it. So I'll just grab these two up here, paste them down here. And then they'll have padding 20 pixels on the Y and 40 pixels on the X. I have a background color of gray. They'll have a color of white and a border of one pixel solid black. Cursor will be pointer just so that when we hover over it, it will turn into a pointer. And then they'll have a font size of 20 pixels. Save that. And there we go, we have our pad, except you'll notice that we have two spots for zero and it's only taking up one. So to make that work, we're gonna grab our zero class and then we'll do grid area and it'll call, be called zero. Save that and now it takes up two spots, but it's not working right now because some of the other stuff is interfering with it. We have to do it for equal as well. So we'll grab the equal by doing dot equal and doing grid area equal on it. So there's our equal now. Now we have to grab, we have to make sure our display up here is set as well. So to make that, we'll go into our index.js file and we'll make another div. And this div will have a class name of this. And then back in our style.css, we can grab our dis with dot dis which stands for display. And then we'll do a grid area of dis on it. Save that. Oh, I thought that would work. Oh, I have to save it all. Yep, there we go. Right now our disk isn't showing because it has nothing in it. But if I make the background color at black, then you'll see there's our display. Its background color is black. While we're here, we'll also add a text align of right so that it's up on the right side. And we'll also make its font size to be 20 pixels. Now we'll hop back into our index.js file. And we want to make some of these buttons different colors than the others. Like for example, in this one, these ones are red, these ones are dark gray, these ones are light gray, and this one's blue. So to be able to do that, we have to add unique classes to these for like dark gray or light gray. So in this case, we'll grab all of our number ones. So do option click to be able to have multiple cursors. Grab all the ones with numbers, and then also the zero and the dot, and we'll make it a dark gray class there. Now they all have the dark gray class. And then we can go into our style.css and do dot dark gray and gave it a background color of a dark gray, which would be hashtag 333, which is pretty dark and save all. And there we go. Now we have a dark gray buttons for those ones. Now we want to make the AC and C red or like tomato-ish. So I'll go into the AC and C and we'll give them a class of tomato. And then back in our CSS, we'll go dot tomato and do BGC of tomato. Save that and there now they're a reddish color. Now we want to make this equal sign to be blue. So we'll add the class for that, which will just be blue. And then we'll do dot blue BGC of blue. Or in this case, I want my custom blue, which is gonna be a hashtag 5599FF. And there we go. Now our equal sign is blue. And these gray ones here, we don't have to touch because they're already light gray. So that's good. Now we want to add on click handlers for every single button because right now they, they literally do nothing. So we have to do on click handlers for them all. So again, we'll do option to select a bunch of cursors. I think I can do, was it option shift down? No, is it option down to add a cursor? No, it's a uh, control down. No, is it command down? No, is it command shift down? No, I know there's a way to like add another cursor down 
by hitting the down arrow row. Command option down. Yeah, command option down to add a cursor down. And then for all of these, we'll do on click. On click equals a JavaScript function. And most of these will have the function of display. So I guess I'll just put display in here. And then we need to define that function. So const display equals an arrow function. Save it and prettier makes it like expand out more. Now I want to define some pieces of state up here. And the state that we're gonna have is called expression and set expression. And it's gonna equal a react.useState. So this is a react hook. And by default, it's gonna be an empty string. So right now we want to make it so that we can click on these buttons and then it shows like what we're doing up here. And then in our display function, we're going to do set expression and we'll take our previous expression and we'll take it and we'll add the, we'll add the symbol that's passed to it onto it. And the symbol will come from its parameters. So how do we actually pass that symbol in? We want the unique symbol for the actual button. So if we click seven, then symbol will be seven. So to do that, we'll go down to seven, which is right here, seven. And for our display, we'll do an arrow function and it will pass in seven to the display. And I might as well make it a string as well. And then we want to display it in our display here. So in this uh, div with the class name of display, we'll open that up and we'll do an input that has a value equal to our expression. And it also has a placeholder equal to zero. And then it's also disabled so that we can't do anything with it. It's just, just there for disp display. So disabled. So there's our input. It just has zero in it right now, but if we click seven, then we can do seven. Although we can't do any of the other ones because they don't pass in a parameter of symbol. So we basically have to do this for all of them. The all clear and clear, we don't actually do this function, so we can get rid of those. Although for the division, we do need that one. We do an arrow function, display, division. So yeah, basically do this for all of the ones, numbers and the symbols here of division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. And then also do it for the equal sign, or actually maybe not do it for the equal sign. So to do this a little quicker, I'll just do our option trick. So option click to do multiple cursors, make them all arrow functions, and then also give them parameters. The times one, instead of an X, it's gonna be the star. And then we'll do the numbers for all of these ones. Our equal button, it will have a function called calculate because that's what we want it to do when we click it. We want it to calculate our expression. So up here, we'll we will define our calculate function. And then we want to have a new state called answer. And set answer equals react.useState, which is going to be zero by default. And then when we calculate it, we'll do set answer equal to eval, which is a regular JavaScript function that is key to this project. And we want to evaluate our expression. That we have and right now nothing's showing up i think it's because these things need a function in them the all clear one will have a function of all clear and the clear is gonna just have a function of clear and we'll define them up here there we go we have our two functions all clear and clear save it should show up now yep and i can click all these and multiply and then hit equal and it doesn't do anything right now because we aren't tying it to anything like it might actually be making the answer but we aren't using answer anywhere, so it's not displaying. And we want it to display in our display. Underneath our input, we're going to do another div, except this one will have a class name of total, and it will show our answer. So let's see if it works. And it might not because the text might be black and we can't see it right now. So to fix that, we'll go into our style.css, and then inside of our dis, or inside of our dot total, we're gonna have some padding for it, uh, five pixels on the Y and 20 pixels on the X, and we're gonna make its color to be yellow. So once I save that, it should show up. Yep, cool, 882, that's the answer for that. And then we also want to make our input look better because right now it's looking weird. So to grab that, we'll just do dot dis, input. We'll make it have a width of 100%, a color of white. We'll give it some padding as well of five pixels on the X or five pixels on the Y and 20 pixels on the X. It'll have a text align of right because right now it's on the left, which I don't want. And then it will also have a background color of black instead of that gray. Save that. And for some reason it's off the page there. Yeah, not really sure why it's off the page there, but uh, we'll figure it out later, I guess. Right now we want to handle our all clear and clear on clicks. So in our all clear, we just want to set our expression back to nothing. And we also want to set our answer back to nothing, back to zero. And then in our clear, which is gonna be like a backspace, we wanna do set answer. And we wanna take the previous answer and do stuff to it. 
we'll take it and we'll do that split on it, split every character, and then we'll do that slice on it. We'll slice from the zero index to its length, minus one, and then we'll join it back up. So that should work for the answer. And then it'll also set total back to zero or set our answer back to zero. I'm sorry, set answer is gonna be actually set expression and set answer is gonna be back to zero as well. Save that. And now when we click in here, we should be able to clear. And yep, it goes back to zero. What happens if I make my width like 90%? Okay, I guess that helped it. Okay, so I suppose just make the input width 90% instead of 100%. For some reason, our input isn't picking up that it should be 20 pixels in font size. Don't really know what's going on there, but we want to make its placeholder white instead of this gray. So to grab the placeholder, all we have to do is grab our input and then do placeholder or double colon and placeholder to grab it and then we'll make its color to be white. So there we go, now it's white, sticks out a lot better. And then we also wanna make it so that when we hover over these buttons, they change a little bit. So back up where it says dot pad button, we'll do dot pad button hover. So colon hover, and then we want to change its border up to be one pixel solid white when we hover. And we want its color to be slightly gray, CCC, save it. And now when we hover over it, we get a nice effect. So now our calculator is almost done. Like it, it can do calculations and stuff and we can go backspace and then like add a different number and we can clear it all. But one thing we can't do is we can't do like 96 plus nine equals and then we can't like do times nine or maybe we can. But one thing that we can't do is we can't do like all clear and then do nine plus six equals and then like hit another number and then have it reset just by hitting another number after we hit the equal sign. So that's kind of what we want to implement now. Cause right now this equal sign just does calculate and it just evaluates the expression. But I also wanted to like add an equal sign at the end. So to do that, we'll do set expression and it'll take the previous expression and do previous plus our equal sign. So now when I hit equal, the equal sign shows up. And then in our display function, so this is click, or this is Ryan every time we like click a number or one of these symbols, we want to check if the last character in our expression is an equal sign. So to check that, we'll do answer the index of the length minus one. It'll be actually expression. So to check that, we'll do expression, expression dot length minus one. So that'll grab the last character in the expression. And we wanna check if it's equal to an equal sign. And if it is, then we want to check if the next symbol, so the symbol when we click this, equals either a number or it equals one of these symbols, multiplication, subtraction, division, or plus. So to check that, we'll do if, symbol we'll do exp uh, regular expression for this as well so if it's one through nine or dot dot test on our symbol so basically if symbol is one through nine or dot then we want to do whatever's in this if statement which we want to set our answer or set our uh, expression to the symbol otherwise if it's one of these then we'll do set expression to be our total or our answer i mean to be our answer plus the symbol that we have. So now let's try this out. If I do 78 times 9 and do equal and I can do plus and then it does 702 plus something. So now 702 plus 78 is 7080 or 780. And then if I click a number then it'll clear and reset. So I'll do 1 plus 6 and there we go now we have 7. So yeah here's my JavaScript calculator. It's all done. I think it works pretty well. We can go back one space or we can hit equal. Basically the magic method in this whole entire project is this eval function, which is a regular JavaScript function that will evaluate an expression of a string. So like it'll, if I had like two plus two here, then eval of this string two plus two, it'll be four. So that's really cool. So if I save that and do calculate, then it'll be four, but yeah. That's why we do it this way. And we didn't use any bootstrap for this. It was all our custom CSS. We use this um, grid template area to make sure that our zero takes up two spaces here and make sure our equal sign takes up two spaces as well, just by defining it like that. Our index.js file has just over hundred lines, whereas the free code camp one. If I change the view to editor's view and they used React as well, except they did class-based components. Theirs is 300 lines long. So not something you really want to deal with. And hopefully I made things a lot simpler and it still has the correct functionality that it needs. 
And there's also not too much CSS. And we were able to set up with React using the script tags of React, React DOM, and then Babel, and then doing text slash Babel, and then linking to our JavaScript file and having it render into the root div. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Next up, we're going to do the Pomodoro clock or like a 25 plus five clock. I don't know why they don't call it the Pomodoro clock anymore, but uh, that's what is it's gonna be called because it's like a 25 minute clock and then like a five minute break. And then you're, it's supposed to be great for pro productivity. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one where we build this Pomodoro clock. I'll see you next time. Bye.